So the next question is a nice easy one mark question. So if we zoom in, we'll begin. So it reads chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 are isotopes of chlorine. What is the difference between these two isotopes? Well, the first thing you need to identify is um, what is an isotope. So you need to recall what the definition of an isotope is. And you should know for higher tier material section here, it reads each isotope has the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. And if you see in the example above, this is the same example that's being examined on right now. So this goes to show examples given, please memorize because they're gonna keep turning up over and over again. So to answer this exam question, it's advisable to first put down the definition. So you'd write the same number of protons and electrons but a different number of neutrons. That's what an isotope is. And then you would follow that sentence by saying that chlorine 37 has more neutrons than chlorine 35. Or if you really wanna be specific, you could say chlorine 37 has two more neutrons than chlorine 35. And that will give you the one mark. The next question is worth two marks where there's two gaps to fill in, one mark for each gap filled in. So the question reads, for the two marks, look at the diagram, it shows a helium atom, as shown, where the outer shell is the electrons, and the nucleus containing the protons and the neutrons. So the question then continues to read, uh, the table shows some information about the particles found in the nucleus of a helium atom. Complete the table. So you got the neutron and the proton. You're told that the proton's relative mass is 1, and the relative charge is plus 1. So now you got to fill in the information for the relative mass and charge for the neutron. So they're basically asking you to recall the information from this table here. If we zoom in, we can see that the neutron has zero charge and has a relative mass of one. So therefore, it's important to memorize this table as it's the fundamentals of what chemistry is about. So zero for charge and one for mass. So returning back to the exam question, zero for charge and one for mass. Don't get the two mixed up because in the book, they have put the mass column on this side and the charge column on this side. It looks like the examiners did that on purpose, just in case you were just memorizing and not really understanding what you were memorizing. So read the question carefully, because they like to mix things up a bit to kind of catch you off guard. So here we have another nice, easy one mark question, where it reads, this question is about atoms. Look at the diagram of an oxygen atom. So here the diagram shows you the electrons on the outer shells, inner shell, and the nucleus containing the protons and the neutrons. So the atomic number of oxygen is eight. What is meant by atomic number? So for one mark, you're being asked to regurgitate the definition of atomic number. And in case you didn't know, the revision guide tells you that what you should be memorizing for the definition is the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. But they could have asked you about the mass number instead. So you also need to memorize that the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, as shown here. So memorize this, these easy one marks, you don't want to lose them because they can distinguish the difference between your A grade and your A star grade. So the next question is a nice easy two marks question where you asked to fill in the gaps, two gaps to fill in for two marks, so each gap representing one mark. So the question reads, an atom of chlorine can be represented by the symbol as shown, so this is chlorine 37, complete the table about this atom of chlorine. So you're told the number of protons, which is 17, and the number of electrons, which is 17, but you're being asked to fill in the number of neutrons and the electronic structure. So as we've seen already from here in the revision guide, if we zoom in, the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom, basically the top number, and the bottom number is the atomic number, which is the number of protons in an atom. So using this information, and going back to the exam question, to work out the number of neutrons, you basically subtract 17 from 37 because um, as we know the mass number contains the number of protons and neutrons so if we take 37 from 17 that would give us the remaining number telling us what the number of neutrons are and that is 20 37 take away 17 20 right so now that we got one mark we have to work out the second mark so when you're being asked about the electronic structure and you need to know what that's about that's basically like a special way to write the number of electrons that the atom has so with the aid of the revision guide over here under electronic configuration we are told that electronic configuration tells you how the electrons are arranged around the nucleus and shells, also known as energy level. The first shell can hold a maximum of two electrons, and every shell after that holds a maximum of eight electrons. So that's basically everything you need to know. So the first number will be two, and the second number will be eight, third number eight, fourth number eight. But depending on how many electrons there are. So if we go back to the exam question, if there are 17 electrons, so the first number will be two, the second number will be eight, giving you a total of 10 electrons. And then how many electrons are left will be seven. So therefore, what you would write in here is two, eight, seven. Or more correctly, two, full stop, eight, full stop, seven. And that will give you the two marks.